This video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. If you would like to become a patron, check out the link in the video description. Uh, today we're going to be talking about projects that I did during my first year of design school. If you're new here, hello, my name is Morgan. I graduated from college about a year ago. I got my Bachelor of Fine Arts in Graphic Design from Bowling Green State University, and now I work from home as a freelancer. This is going to be a monster of a video to edit, but I do intend on going through my other years of design school as well. So if you're interested in seeing how my work evolves throughout college, you can subscribe to be notified when those videos are up. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the work. Art class sucked. Maggie, do you want to explain why art class sucked? Because we have so much homework. We have projects due in a day and a half. So right out of the gate, in my very first art class of college, I was completely destroyed. The professor gave us each a book and told us to make it two-dimensional before the next class. So of course I went with the very first idea that came into my head, and that was about stress. I started from the initial concept of human organization because that was the name of the book, and I made it into an exploration of the relationship between organization and disorganization, which became a study of a student's mind. I was totally ripped apart for doing a cliche project. So after that, we were given the weekend to transform the 2D work into something 3D. So I went to Goodwill with my roommate and found this birdcage. Showering a bird with kaboom. This is for my art project. It was like mold. Oh! Each consecutive iteration of this project had to relate back to the theme of the one that came before, so I decided to turn the entire birdcage into a metaphor for the human mind. I used yarn to segment the cage into different planes, the separation between conscious and subconscious thought. I also got slammed for this one particularly hard, actually. I think I remember it being really embarrassing. She said that chaos and stress was overdone and I needed to go a step further. So for the final step of the project, we had to convert it from 3D into 4D. In this context, 4D meant like video or performance art. So I cleaned out the birdcage and I found some green squares of fabric at Goodwill that I put around it to encourage people to sit down. And then I recorded two videos of myself meditating outside and I put those on two laptops on either side so it was like the audience could participate by meditating with me. And I wanted to encourage people to like come and go as they please by making the videos like not sync up. So on one screen I could walk in, sit down, and on the other screen I could walk in a bit later and sit down, and the person, me, on the other screen would get up and walk away. I think the professor was really pleased with this direction that I took. She thought that I got a lot closer to the kind of work that I should be making in college. There's probably a lot more to this stuff that I don't remember because it was like five years ago, but that was that for that project. Oh, wait. I've forgotten something. After the last transformation, we were, I believe, allowed to transform it into whatever we wanted as long as it was changed in some way. So I bought a shit ton of yarn and got all my friends together in my basement to walk in a big circle around the birdcage, wrapping it up in yarn. And then I fast forwarded that and I put it on my iPod that I put inside of the final wrapped up cage. So the final result was like this sculptural object and people could come and peer into it. I also attached headphones, which you could listen to and it would play like industrial noises. My personal thesis for this sculpture was complete bullshit. I think I was trying to say something about aspects of human life being constructed, but during the critiques, people interpreted it differently and the interpretations were better than what I intended, so I just kind of decided to go with that. People said that they felt like passive observers and they imagined looking out of the cage and remaining still as life bustled around them. A few people said they thought the central theme was entrapment. Other people interpreted it as a safe space or a metaphor for introversion. I think it was actually a pretty cool project if you interpret it from that point of view. After that one, we moved on to our main research project of the semester. To start out, we did some exercises to land on a research question that we would work with for this project. I decided to go for the low-hanging fruit and do commentary on social media. I hate this project. 
<laughs> I don't think there's anything good or original about it. At the end of the project, we were supposed to write about our entire process and get it printed as a physical book. I do not have that with me at the moment, but I'm just gonna go through that. My research question was, how has social networking unconsciously altered the way we interact to be more immersive and self-centered? The beginning of the book, I talk about how I got the idea, brainstorming, how it relates to the book that we were reading in my critical thinking class at the time. I hooked this up to my Tumblr blog to see what the most used words were, and I think the biggest one was my, which I thought was indicative of social media making us more self-centered, so I decided to focus on the word my. This is a sketch of how I originally intended it to look. I edited social media logos onto backgrounds to imitate launch screens. The professor really liked the social media icons on their own, so she suggested that I put them on posters by themselves, and I was happy to do anything that would be easy, so. At first I wanted to recreate a social networking experience for the audience, but the professor said that I should just show one instead, so I set up Tumblr on a school iPad and brought up the selfie tag on Tumblr so that people could go up and scroll through it, and I juxtaposed that with the word my. I walked in and there were giant letters in the room. Oh yeah, I painted like six foot letters. I still find pieces of string in our room. <laughs> and this is the final piece that asks the viewer the research question. I think that was like the beefiest project I did, so the rest of these should be a lot simpler. The semester was actually split into two quarters. Uh, the first half was like this methodology methodologies section, and the second half was 2D. So for the second half, we were supposed to continue focusing on the same research question. I was not thrilled about this because I was really tired of trying to say things about social media. For the first 2D project, we made scans from our previous project. So I scanned, you know, my big letters. I scanned some screenshots from the selfie tag, and then we had to use those assets to illustrate principles of two-dimensional design. So those were wide value, narrow value, inverted value, perspective, line quality, actual lines. I don't remember what that was supposed to mean. I think it was just like line art. Implied lines, linear networks. I don't remember what that was supposed to be either. Stippling, invented texture, spatial or flat texture. Trompe l'oeil. I did not take French. Figure versus ground rectilinear versus curvilinear, and geometric versus organic. After that project, we had to illustrate six more principles, again using the same assets. So we have balance versus emphasis, uh, with a really unsettling Twitter bird, unity versus variety, proportion, with another very unsettling Twitter bird, rhythm versus emphasis, unity versus variety. There are currently small circles everywhere. <laughs> They're in the shower. They're in the shower? Yeah! Oh my god. I made a hashtag that was made out of printer dots and I cut out the printer dot. It was for a project. It was terrifying. And scale. For the scale one, I just printed out like a tiny little Twitter logo and put it in the middle. And then the final project of the class was about emergent meaning, which was starting to create something and finding the meaning in it and expanding on it instead of starting from an idea and creating work to express the idea that you started with. In theory, this would be very cool. In practice, it was a project that the entire class worked on together and all got the same grade on, pretty much, which, if you've ever had a group project, you know is very stressful. I should also note for this final project, we were supposed to combine all of our assets from our projects together. I eventually suggested the idea of crumpling and scanning paper. The School of Art was kind of angry about this. <laughs> they were like, you are using way too much ink and paper. One of the restrictions of this project was we had to work on two specific walls at a specific hallway, so that was the idea for one wall, but we still had the other wall to work with. Originally, we decided to stick with the crumpling theme. By having these crumpled pieces on one wall and smooth pieces on the other wall, we created a juxtaposition that established a dialogue between the two walls about replication and authenticity. We had to come up with a research question based on the meaning that emerged. How has technology encouraged the creation and scrapping of multiple ideas? Boy, I don't care about this. <laughs> Once we picked that research question, we started over on a bunch of things. Jumping all the way to the end, after a whole bunch of trial and error, we ended up with this, which is like an octopus. It's supposed to represent the growth of ideas 
All right, moving on. I also was in a traditional drawing class. I'm just gonna go through the pictures I drew. We have contour, which is when you draw it all as one line without picking up the pencil. Blind contour, which is doing the same thing, but with your eyes closed. A few gesture drawings, which is uh, trying to capture the essence of a model very quickly. Filling a paper with charcoal and then erasing the charcoal to create value. A set of three pencil drawings where one was a part of the human body and the others were objects around us that looked like that part of the human body. A charcoal self-portrait. I actually really, really liked this. This is the line art and this is the final piece that I stayed up until like 5 a.m. working on. This class was really a nightmare in terms of pulling all-nighters. Oh my god. <laughs> and the final one was two-point perspective, which we had to pick a spot in the hallway for and I absolutely hated it. And then the last class of the semester after that was color theory. We had to buy really expensive proper acrylic paints for this class uh, because otherwise the colors wouldn't blend correctly. The first project was going out into nature and trying to mix colors to replicate the colors that we saw and then eventually taking a photo and turning it into a full painting. I was not entirely happy with how mine turned out but it was okay. And then the final project was creating a collage from magazines. The goal of the project was to take a photo of an indoor location and then create it using colors from an outdoor location. So I combined a photo that I took from my trip to Canada with a photo of a booth from a restaurant. The professor told us that we had to use an X-Acto knife or we wouldn't be able to do this properly, but I did the whole thing with a pair of scissors and I actually won an award for it. I got first place out of all the first year students, uh, which I was really thrilled about, but I also super was not expecting. <laughs> so those were all of my art classes from the first semester. I also have a couple pieces of bonus content for you, which were art projects I made for non-art classes. This is a piece I did for a zine for my women's studies class. It's like a doll dress-up game making fun of how a lot of female characters in video games have to wear like really skimpy body armor, which was a lot of fun to do. I really liked this. And then the other piece of content is a TED talk I gave for my credit thinking class about why Comic Sans is terrible. I actually completely forgot about this uh, until I was going through my hard drive looking for all of my projects. A lot of students gave talks on very serious topics like what is the genetic root of cancer and then I went up there and was like here's my TED talk on why Comic Sans is like Nickelback. So why is this horrifying to us? Why do we see professional logos created with Comic Sans and cringe? And so to start exploring this I went into the history of how Comic Sans was created, what it was for, how it was taken from its original context and experienced this huge explosion of popularity. And then I compared it to some other fonts that have been degraded by overuse. And then I applied that philosophy to other areas of life, like Nickelback. People don't hate Nickelback because the music is bad. While there are certainly people who do hate Nickelback the band and Comic Sans the font, what most people are saying when they say I hate Nickelback or I hate Comic Sans is that they hate the concept of those things, not the things themselves. <laughs> In my second semester, I had three art classes, 3D, 4D, and figure drawing. So let's start with 3D. So 3D was a pretty challenging class for me because I am not particularly good at imagining things in a spatial sense. So I experienced a bit of a learning curve with this first project, which used chicken wire. The goal was to create forms within forms in order to evoke themes of metamorphosis or movement. We had these journals that we used to record our process. So I collected a bunch of images and eventually landed on the idea of combining a fish with a leg? It wasn't supposed to have any deeper meaning, it was just like a composition project. This is my <laughs> initial experimentations with the chicken wire. I put together the main body, which looked kind of like a gourd, and two smaller orbs to attach to it. I then had to spray paint it, so there's the white base coat, and then I added complementary colors, blue and orange. Hello guys, I am in the model shop at, I don't know what time it is, what time is it? It is 12.44 a.m. and I have class tomorrow. Are these dry? Can I pick these up? These are the little, the little spheres that are gonna go in here. There's one that goes in the back and one that kind of floats in the middle of it. One of the interesting things about three-dimensional mediums is that it looks different from every angle you look at it. So the relationship between the two orbs changes depending on your point of view. So the second project, I don't really remember the prompt for this. If I had to guess, it would be rhythm. We were supposed to cut pieces out of this board in the wood shop along with like spacers to put between them, like making a 3D shape out of flat shapes. I started out with this small shape, which I cut out gradually larger and larger. Here's a picture of the glue drying while being clamped together to make sure that 
that it holds really securely. And here is the final piece. It's not particularly impressive, but this was extremely difficult for me. I had to get a lot of help with this project because I didn't want to be anywhere near the buzz saws and stuff, but it all came together in the end. And then the final project, I believe we were supposed to create a sculpture out of found objects, not things that we ourselves made. Somehow I found myself interested in the stigma around periods. I think we were supposed to respond to like a top news story from a specific date, I don't remember exactly, but I chose to respond to one of Donald Trump's comments about menstruating. So next I went to Goodwill to see what kind of objects I could find and sort of come up with a concept, and I ended up finding this kind of nice looking bowl, which I filled with tampons and put a fork in. Do you want a tampon? <laughs> what the hell happened? <laughs> The professor challenged me to extend my project beyond just the one bowl, so I switched gears to focus on the inaccessibility of menstrual products, including the fact that they're taxed as a luxury, even though they're necessary. My grandma dug out a bunch of dishes and silverware from my late great-grandma. She also gave me a small card table and helped me create a tablecloth that would fit the table. And this is the final product, photographed very nicely in a studio. So that was my final project for 3D, so moving on to 4D now. We have the first project which was... Oh god, the clothes hangers. I don't remember the original prompt at all, but for the original brainstorming, I took some clothes hangers and stuck them upside down in the ground next to the railroad tracks. And then somehow I made the jump from that concept to hanging clothes hangers from a tree. So I went to Big Lots and I bought like a hundred hangers and then made it into like a giant plastic wind chime. I called this project Descending Hangers. I think I ended up going with like a theme about consumer consumerism? The feedback I got from the class on this was that it didn't have enough impact and it needed to have more gravity. So for the final project, I went out to the store again and obtained 300 hangers, which is even harder to explain to the cashier. And my roommate came with me to the park and helped me set it all up again. The last hangers going on. <gasps> oh! You're not in the frame. The hangers were so heavy that they actually dragged the branch down, which I thought made a very interesting statement. All right, it's, it's time run. to take this project down. There's only one way to do this properly. <laughs> That's actually so cute. And then afterward, 300 hangers lived in the trunk of my car for like five months because I didn't feel like figuring out what to do with them. So that first project I do remember was supposed to be an installation. So it was site specific. The meaning of the piece depended on it being on that tree. So the next project was performance art, which I found kind of difficult. I think I was really busy. For the first draft, I just submitted a recording of me being the actor for my classmate's stop motion project. And then my final project was supposed to be a commentary, I believe about how expensive college is. I titled the piece Sightseeing and had a bunch of my friends help out. The new 30th edition of Best Colleges was just released this morning, and we've got it. You're seeing the 2015 rankings first on CBS this morning. What criteria do you use? Do you accept bribes? <laughs> <laughs> Only yep. very large ones. Uh... As a new student at BGSU, you should always go to campus activities. Moving on to the final project I did for this class, it was video, which having a YouTube channel, I was already very familiar with, so this was pretty easy for me. Let me plug in some headphones. We started with a 300 second sequence where we were supposed to capture, ooh, that's loud, where we were supposed to go out and capture footage that illustrated a certain principle. There was one where we were supposed to put the camera on a dolly, but since none of us had a dolly, we had to get creative with it, so I put mine on a shopping cart. I actually had a lot of fun with this uh, because I got to go downtown and explore a whole bunch of alleyways because I was interested in like the weird stickers and graffiti. So after creating this first 300 second sequence, we had to reduce it to 180 seconds. And for that one, we were supposed to collect found footage, put it alongside the clips we got ourselves, and see what like new meaning could arise from putting those two things together. Mine was a bit heavy-handed, but I found some clips of women astronauts, I believe, and I wanted to say something about sexism in the workplace. And I just started screaming. And then for the final part of the project, we had to reduce it to 90 seconds. I don't think I've watched this since I made it for this class, so I'm just gonna play it and we will experience it for the first time together. There's a creepy PC thing out there that really bothers me. Oh, Angie. Harriet Tubman began her life in the bonds of slavery. Oh, okay, I remember what this was about. 
but lived her life helping others achieve their freedom. Americans have got to learn how to take a joke. So take your beating and we'll get along fine. Ooh, that's heavy handed. A lot of people ask when they meet me, especially in Moscow, how did you work for NASA? What um, even gave you that idea? And I just started yelling and I didn't care who was gonna hear. And I just started screaming. Harriet Tubman's bravery and determination allowed her to accomplish incredible things throughout her amazing life. And when you're around super sensitive people, you cannot relax and be spontaneous because you have no idea what's going to upset them. final one we were supposed to link it back to a recent news story and the one that I picked was the pushback against the effort to put Harriet Tubman on a dollar twenty dollars so I kind of uh, juxtaposed clips of pundits talking about how oh we're all so PC with clips relating to oppression to show that there are actually very real problems still and I threw the footage of the train in reverse to kind of be like a euphemism for progress being walked back we haven't made the progress that people think we've made we still have problems with discrimination today. And then the final art class that I had was figure drawing. And that was very scary for me at first. I was not particularly thrilled to see a naked stranger. I felt like I was going to throw up. I thought that I would be super embarrassed. I thought I would like blush super hard and make a fool of myself. But after that first class, everything turned out perfectly fine. Uh, this is how the classroom was set up. It was a big semicircle of drawing horses tipped over to be pedestals. And we would set our big drawing pads on top and do drawings with a certain time limit. We didn't really have any projects for this class. Uh, there were a few homework assignments early on. He gave us this picture of a hand and I had to draw the hand. We started out using graphite and charcoal, but as the class went on, we were allowed to branch out to whatever other materials we felt like using. If you would like to see the original drawings, they are all on my ancient art blog if they have not been flagged by Tumblr's NSFW bots. So that is it for this video. I didn't actually have any graphic design classes during the first year because it's more of a general foundation year, so I hope you enjoyed this look at the kinds of basics that I learned. This is gonna take a lot of time to edit, so I'm just gonna get right into that, and hopefully I will see you in my next video. Hello, am I going in the vlog? Maybe. Oh my god, I feel so honored. I watch your vlogs. Oh my god, I'm your like, number one fan!